It's a spectacular frame of deeply carved and gilded lime wood, um, which is a very close grained wood, which is particularly good for carving. Um, it's what's called a trophy frame. Um, so a very grand uh, sort of thing to enclose, in this case, a mirror, uh, a piece of a very old mirror. Now, this frame is, even if we didn't know anything about it, it would slightly stop traffic in the street. But uh, we know who it was commissioned for, someone called Edward Russell, who was a younger son of the Duke of Bedford, the great Russell family based at Woburn Abbey in Bedfordshire. And um, he was born in 1653 and died in 1727. We know that because in the cresting between these two extraordinary mermen are his arms. Uh, we know that they have to be that of um, a younger son of the Duke of Bedford because um, this little star here placed here means a I think it's a third son. So in heraldry, that actually places it. We also know that it must have been made, this mirror, before 1697. Because in 1697, and I'll tell you more about why, he was created an earl, the first Earl of Orford. And so had it been created after that, it would have been surmounted, of course, with his coronet and probably by his supporters as well. So he's still a commoner. And um, uh, another clue, of course, is, you know, these mermen and shells. And the shells are, are, you know, fantastically realistic. They do actually represent real shells. This is a strombus, and under here is a thing called a nerite. Um, the scale is slightly different. So uh, Admiral Russell was incredibly uh, rewarded. In 1693, he was created Admiral of the Fleet, uh, the year later, he was created First Lord of the Admiralty. And then in 1697, he was created First Earl of Orford of the First Creation. Admiral Russell had something to celebrate. And um, it's, we, he must have commissioned the frame just shortly after the battle. Um, because, as we can see, it took a little while for the title to come through. And I think that this dates the, the frame literally to about 16, um, um, 91, 92. Now, um, we're just going to look at the frame, the various elements of it. Uh, it's flanked by these two strapping figures. We have Hercules, uh, who is here. Um, uh, ov obviously, the great uh, mythological hero, heroic endeavour, standing for heroic endeavour and physical strength, which, of course, alludes to Russell's victory over the French. He's grasping the skin of the Nemean lion, which I suppose is, you know, the fallen tyrant France, and his knotted club. And he's holding in his hands these uh, the apples of Hesperides, which are, weirdly enough, not depicted as apples, the, you know, the Granny Smith you might have in the fruit bowl at home, but as pomegranates, pom granat or pom de granada. Uh, they are particularly associated with Spain. And indeed, Spain, uh, the Spanish peninsula, the Iberian peninsula, was uh, in classical times believed to be where the Garden of Hesperides was, where, which, um, where this famous tree with this forbidden fruit was, um, uh, grew and where Hercules risked life and limb in order to go and steal them. And so I suspect this is a, 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 a sly reference to ye protector and deliverer of Spain. On the other side is our friend Mercury, the messenger of the gods, but also god of commerce, of trade, and of financial gain. And he's holding not one, but several bags of money. And I suspect this alludes to the fact that uh, Admiral Russell, towing away three great French flagships, the prize money from those captured ships, um, um, and indeed, you know, the, the fact that he, he would also have taken... Uh, rewards and things from 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 the king and and, and so on, uh, meant um, that he had done very very well out of his great naval victory. Down below we have this curious figure who is going to, uh, just so you know, going to be a, a very popular Christmas card in future. I'm just thinking, but it's not an angel. This is Fame with two trumpets, uh, winged Fame. Um, but that indicates the fact that she can speak both ill and good of her favourites. 
So, and um, all around the frame, and we will cons can see this when we look at it upstairs, there are delicious, there's rippling wave-like mouldings, there's shells, there's mermen, there's small bo boys holding kind of military naval equipment, um, a lot of fishy marine symbolism. Why the Russell frame for the Fitzwilliam Museum? Well, um, we have exceptional collections here of furniture and of sculpture, and indeed, um, both of these things are an important feature in the character of our galleries, that very lovely, almost like drawing room feel of um, you get at the Fitzwilliam Museum with bronzers, with um, this wonderful table. We also, interestingly, have a, a great collection of picture frames. Many of our frames are historically interesting in their own right, but we lack a spectacular Baroque trophy frame. And this is a deficiency, ladies and gentlemen, that the Russell frame will surely remedy. But bring this treasure back to Cambridgeshire. Thank you very much.